So the age-old question at this point is, should you draft a running back in the first round? Or should you pay a running back after they finish their rookie deal? Uh, it's a debate that's gotten talked about a lot. And I wanted to make a video really just explaining everything, explaining why this is even a debate, right? Because running backs used to be the face of the league. Why are we now talking about them like they don't even matter? Uh, and why do some people disagree with that? And who's right in this scenario? Well, I want to get into it. Let's kind of give the argument for why running backs don't matter and for why they do matter uh, and when you should draft them, all that good stuff. So real quick, let's do the running backs that had been selected uh, It's since 2012. I picked that year for a reason, but uh, since 2012, the running backs that were selected in round one. These are the running backs, and it's definitely a mixed bag, right? There's some of these guys you look at and say like, oh, wow, yeah, they were totally worth that draft pick. And some guys where you're like, oh, yeah, they were drafted in the first round. I completely forgot about them. Maybe you even have a couple of, wait, who was that again uh, on the list, uh, depending on how closely you follow the NFL. Uh, but yeah, these are the first round running backs. Uh, and so I decided to kind of arbitrarily look at them and say, who lived up to their draft pick. So who was worth whatever pick was spent on them? And this is completely subjective and arbitrary, but it's it's a, a start in getting us going here in this video. I said six of these players did live up to the when they were drafted, uh, and at least have so far lived up to when they were drafted. Um, nine didn't, and two, I'm going too early to call. Uh, Jameer Gibbs and B. John Robinson, I think, are on pace too, but I want to see multiple good years for me to really say you're, you've been worth when you've been drafted, so just going too early to call for uh, those two guys, but uh, if I had to bet, I would bet on succeeding, so that's where they're at. But if we're taking those out of the equation... This means 60% of those draft picks have failed, 40% have hit, so it's not a complete disaster. And again, it's worth mentioning, it's not like there's a position where 100% hit, right? But even so, 40% is very much on the low side. Even if you want to count the other two and say it's closer to 50%, that's still on the low side for a position. It's not quite quarterbacks, which are like one and three, but uh, it's it's closer to that than some other positions. So that's worth noting, I think. that That's part one, is that drafting a running back in round one doesn't really have a high hit rate, despite the fact that a lot of running back, best running backs are selected early on. Uh, you know, there's a lot of running backs selected early on, which is why, uh, you know, it doesn't always have the highest hit rate. So, okay, part one, doesn't have the highest hit rate, but you might counter and say, well, quarterbacks don't have a super high hit rate, but obviously it's worth drafting them with first overall picks because of the potential of what happens if they hit and are successful. And that leads to point too, which is that we've kind of come to the realization that running backs don't matter as much as we initially thought they did. Essentially, running backs used to kind of always get the credit for what the offensive line would do. And I think since, you know, as, as we've kind of come along, we've kind of realized, no, the offensive line tends to be the biggest contributing factor. If you have a good offensive line uh, and a coach that knows how to scheme up running plays well, you can get a guy, you know, uh, like Gus Edwards, for example, who, not a perfect example, Lamar Jackson takes some pressure, but you know, that guy has over five yards per carry, whereas some great running backs have like four yards per carry because they don't have the offensive lines, right? It can make a big difference. But even... Looking past that, I'm going to show a series of these for a second. These are uh, pro football focus uh, free agency pages, but really the bottom right hand corner is what you want to look at. This is PFF war, which again, isn't a perfect stat and we can agree to disagree, uh, but you know, I've done my own data on it and it doesn't really seem to stand out as untrue, I would say, uh, which is how many wins added does a player get? And for Saquon Barkley, you see his best year out of the past three years, he had a 0.22 war season, which is a good season. Like that's a valuable player right there. One player adding that much. Also, Josh Jacobs, who had a season where he was Pro Football Focus's highest graded player, uh, gave them 0.28 war. Again, very good season. But when you compare it to other positions, like first Kirk Cousins, who again, quarterbacks we know are valuable, but like he had a year where he had a 3.5 war, which is obviously a massive jump from that. But again, quarterbacks are weird. Let's not really pay too much attention to that. You look at a guy like Chris Jones, who had a 0.7 war season, and you know even last year uh, had a 0.42 war season. So this is twice as valuable as the highest graded uh, halfback, and he was only the fifth highest graded uh, defensive tackle last season. 
Legereus Need, who hasn't been uh, credited for a top 10 graded season in any year he's been in, uh, you know, in these past three years, has still had, you know, in the past two years, 0.6 war, uh, you know, uh, 0.6 wins added, uh, at least. So that's kind of part of it. So again, it's not to say running backs don't matter. Anyone who says running backs don't matter is just wrong. But that's absolutely not true. Running backs matter. And an elite running back, getting a quarter of a war added to your total is very valuable, especially when they're not getting paid a ton typically. But at the same time, it's not as valuable as getting an elite defensive tackle or an elite cornerback, which is why many people feel like you should draft a you know something of that position more, uh, more often especially when they also have higher hit rates you're more likely to if you draft an elite defensive tackle prospect he's more likely to be elite than if you draft the elite uh running back prospect you know to use the the lions jalen carter uh jameer gibbs thing which is a little different because the lions traded back uh, and then, you know, they got extra value. But still, if the Lions had drafted Jalen Carter instead of Jameer Gibbs, on paper, you are getting a, you know, the defensive tackle has, you know, more than twice a, a higher likelihood of hitting and also uh, is probably going to be twice as valuable if they do hit. So that's kind of why you usually would say in a vacuum, go, go with the defensive tackle over the running back. Now, again, Nothing is in a vacuum. Prospects are people. There's different situations. And if you think that Jameer Gibbs has a better chance of hitting than your average running back, or you know uh, Carter has a worse chance of hitting than your average defensive tackle, that's where things get tricky, and that's where you're more than welcome to disagree with it. But just in a vacuum, that's the logic. So let's say everything I'm, I've just said is true. Running backs have a lower hit rate and aren't as valuable. Why does it seem like so many running backs are great after getting drafted in the first round? Why does it seem like that frequently happens? Well, there's this kind of thing that constantly happens that I wanted to discuss as well. Uh, so let's just get into it. Step one, a running back gets drafted early. Let's just say, I don't know, uh, fifth overall. Running back gets drafted fifth overall. Well, what's going to happen to that running back? Well, that running back gets a lot of carries, right? Like you drafted a guy early. He, he, you probably drafted him for a reason. He's probably a good running back. But even if he's not, you're going to get a lot of carries, right? Like someone like uh, Leonard Fournette, for example, gets a lot of carries in year one. Therefore, the running back gets a lot of yards, a lot of touchdowns and highlights, potentially. You're not guaranteed the touchdowns and highlights or even the yards because you get a lot of carries. But the reality is, the more carries you get, the more yards you're going to get, and you're probably going to get more touchdowns and more opportunities for highlights as well. You know, the the running back who only gets 100 carries just doesn't have as many opportunities, even if they're making a highlight real level play with the same frequency as the running back with 300 carries, they're not going to get the attention. Therefore, the running back that was drafted early gets accolades, parades, and money, uh, whereas the other running backs that might be just as good don't get all of those things because they don't get the carries in the first place because they weren't drafted as early. Now, sometimes a running back that, you know, James Robinson was undrafted. He got a lot of carries, right? Uh, it does happen. Sometimes running backs that are, you know, like Jameer Gibbs didn't get a ton of carries his rookie year and was still able to get the highlights and in, in touchdowns and stuff like that. So like it doesn't always work out that way, but this is a thing that is a trend and does happen. A great example is Trent Richardson, which this is why I wanted to make sure the data went back to Trent Richardson because uh, he's a classic example of this. You know, Trent Richardson considered a bust, but his first season he had 950 yards and 11 touchdowns. Well, how'd that happen? How did he do? Was the Browns' offensive line just that good? It was 17th ranked, like it was all right. Uh, he just got a lot of carries, and did he do a lot with those carries? Well, he actually just had 3.6 yards per carry there, yet despite this, despite just the 3.6 yards per carry, and it's also worth mentioning, I know this is kind of small on the screen for that, I apologize, but Pro Football Focus was also, again, say what you want about them, they weren't crazy about Trent Richardson. They said his first season was all right, but a 73 grade, certainly not spectacular here. They weren't crazy about his first uh, season in the NFL. Uh, so despite that, and despite the low uh, yards per carry, the Colts still traded a first round pick to go out and get him because they thought he would be good, largely due to, I think, A, he was good in college, and B, he had bulk stats. He had nearly a thousand yards and 11 touchdowns, but he only had those because he got so many carries in the first place. So therefore, there are running backs who aren't really as good as some other running backs, but they still are the ones who get 
selected to the Pro Bowl and things like that simply because they had the the yards and the carries. I brought up Leonard Fournette, another example of a guy who, you know, he ended up being all right with the Buccaneers, so maybe not the perfect example, but like, uh, you know, definitely got some credit simply due to the fact that he was able to get bulk stats early on in Jacksonville. So that's kind of just the whole, that's the whole argument, right? The argument against running backs is they don't have a high hit rate compared to other positions. They're not as valuable as people realize. And when you draft someone in the first round, sometimes they just look, appear to be better than they actually are. And sometimes the hit rate might actually even be lower than people realize. I think the argument in favor of running backs, though, is there still is plenty of value in a good running back. And to pretend like there isn't any value would be foolish. Paying attention and getting a good running back is an important thing that you should do for your team. It's not something you should just completely neglect. And again, these things don't exist in a vacuum. The Lions quote unquote overdrafted Gibbs, but he ended up being very good for them uh, in his first season. So, you know, you could say that they overdrafted him, but they kind of got the value they wanted for him, right? And you look at the kind of the players drafted immediately after him, they weren't as good. And it's better to get a good running back than a bad edge rusher, right? So things don't exist in a vacuum. Although I would say as a whole, more often than not, drafting a running back around one isn't going to be a great idea. And also the other factor that I didn't even bring up, but kind of the main thing that people talk about with running backs is the shorter shelf life. Guys might only play, you know, uh, four to six seasons before kind of falling off. It's a thing that happens. Some guys play longer, but those are usually the exceptions, not the rules. So as a whole, usually not a great idea to draft a running back in the first round, but you know, uh, nothing exists purely in a vacuum. That's what I think about all of that. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.